biggest misconception about misdemeanors is that they are minor. To start hearing more and more stories of voter suppression, that broke my heart. They're the ones that are using the system. My grandma was fighting for integration back in her day, and I'm fighting for the same thing now. The problem is the system is working the way it's supposed to. We're recording. All right. Sometimes I feel like my life ended that day. My car died on the side of the road. A cop walked over to my car and asked me if I needed help, and I said no. John Clark was convicted on a misdemeanor gambling charge and was forced to work on a chain gang. I just remember being pushed, like being cornered into a wall. I was just starting out life. And I didn't think I had anything to hide. Mary Gay was sentenced to 30 days, plus court costs for stealing a hat. I was arrested that evening. It was a misdemeanor. That was the beginning of the nightmare that I had to go through. Henry Nelson was arrested for using abusive language in the presence of a female and was sent off to the coal mines. He said, you're going to jail. And I'm like, what for? Misdemeanors have historically been the chump change crimes that we didn't pay attention to. I've done nothing. I've done nothing. Man, I just got beat up by the police last night. I could have lost my life. 13 million. Well, that's about 80% of all American criminal dockets. 80% of what our criminal courts do is misdemeanors. Got him in cuffs, look. I ain't doing nothing. The story of misdemeanors is the story of law enforcement continuing to prioritize African Americans, Mexican immigrants, uh, America's so-called criminal class. You act like I really just committed a serious crime. You did do something illegal. You crossed the crosswalk. You might see two or three police standing here waiting for you. Cops would jump out of the van anytime, anywhere. The misdemeanor system has not gotten its fair share of blame. Misdemeanors are the invidious first step in the racialization of crime in this country. Too often, arrests for minor crimes devolve into police violence and death for black and brown people. This is a really dark story. Reconstruction was an era when four million African Americans made it out of bondage and were able to achieve at really high levels. Whether it was in business, um, in, in education, um, different ways of prosperity that really threatened white supremacy. They elected many black men to positions of power. Of course, that was a sea change from how power had been exercised during slavery. And a lot of white folks just didn't like it. They were nostalgic for the old days of overt white supremacy. And so they subverted Reconstruction. 
If you look at misdemeanors and you track them from the Reconstruction era to modern day, you see the fingerprints everywhere of white supremacy and control of black bodies. The bland owners, they had nearly lost everything. And the only way to get that back is to somehow corral the black labor force back onto the same plantations that they had once worked. The most effective way of forcing African-Americans back into this condition that would be so similar to slavery was to begin to criminalize black life itself. Misdemeanor offenses for incredibly trivial or made up things, what should have been tiny penalties for non-existent offenses turn into years of people's lives. Where were you taken? I was taken out to the camps. Where did you sleep? Slept on some hay, chain was on me. I'm being put into handcuffs. I'm being dragged into this cold space. I don't have anything to cover myself. And I'm asked to sit inside of this tiny little room and I have no idea why I'm there. Was there any jury that tried you? No, sir. Did the recorder ask you whether you wanted a lawyer? No, sir. And I thought that I would have time to talk to a court-appointed attorney so we could talk about what happened. I could ask them to get other, you know, pieces of evidence that would prove that, hey, I'm poor. It wasn't like I was trying to run off with this money. Did they furnish any copy of the charge against you? No, sir, they did not. Did they give you any opportunity to plead to any accusation? They never gave me anything at all. When they asked me how I pled, I pled no contest. I didn't understand that no contest is the same as guilty and that I would walk away with a misdemeanor that would affect my ability to get hired. The justice system after emancipation was weaponized against black people. It perpetuated slavery by making the mechanisms of enslavement pretty much the same family separation, back-breaking labor, people having no rights. You could be sold on the steps of the courthouse that you were convicted in and given to the highest bidder. A whole separate criminal code that applied to African Americans was established. Many misdemeanor offenses are best understood as mechanisms of social control. They're not designed to catch dangerous or guilty people, but rather they are tools. We give them to police as additional ways of exercising their authority. Some of these laws were overtly race-based. And with others then and now, the understanding was that the laws would look race neutral, but they would be applied and enforced almost exclusively against black people. For these governments to sell prisoners into slavery, you first have to arrest lots of people. There's a big problem with that, though. There's just not enough crime for this system to work and for it to be profitable. The state governments of the South had to invent new crimes. Southern legislatures, which are essentially run by Confederates at that time, are trying to reinscribe a form of slavery through a system of laws called Black Codes. A whole category of new statutes passed in almost every Southern state that attached these enormous penalties to what were in reality very minor thefts. Those were laws and many others like it that were only ever enforced against African Americans. And so it became a way to have a basis for arresting huge numbers of black people. I don't remember much about writing the check. John Owen was caught taking six years of corn from a cornfield and was arrested under the black codes. This is four dollars and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight dollars. So just this pile right here is how much I went to jail for. Owen was put in jail for months until he was finally tried for theft. I have a theft charge, it's theft by check. I had money in the bank, but I didn't know how long it took for checks to process. Like, I know better now. I could have donated plasma, gotten $25. Under his sentence, Owen was leased in the convict labor and sent to the chain gang where he served two years for the corn and a third year for the court costs. 
I was in the Hayes County Jail for a total of 45 days for $25 worth of food. Michael Brown, who was the teenager who was killed by police in Ferguson, whose death led to the explosion of the Black Lives Matter movement, he was stopped for jaywalking. He stepped off the sidewalk and was walking in the street, and there was a local criminal ordinance that made it a crime to do so. African Americans are being cited for jaywalking at three, five, ten times the rate of white pedestrians. The legislatures of the white South make it a crime to walk alongside a railroad in an era in which there are no paved roads. The easiest way for a poor person to get from one place to another is to walk alongside a railroad. That law didn't say this only applies to black people, but those were laws that were only ever enforced against African Americans. All of us engage in what would be considered to be minor crimes. And for some people, it's crossing the street at the wrong time. But if you're black or brown, then it becomes categorized as something that's criminal. So what is you I'm doing? Did it use a crosswalk? All I'm trying to do is go home, man. I'm tired. I just got off of work. Nandi King says he was walking home from work when it happened. Because I felt like they were going to draw a gun out and shoot me in my back. I'm tired of all this shit, man. Vagrancy laws were passed that essentially meant any black person who was found on the streets unemployed and couldn't show evidence of work was a criminal, a vagrant. Trespass laws originate from this idea that African Americans only belong in certain spaces and at certain times. And so they give police officers the ability under the guise of law to dictate where an African American person can be, what time they can be there, and how they can operate in certain spaces. My kids' daycare was inside of one of the buildings to the um, Skyway, so I figured I'd take a walk, find somewhere to sit down, and um, wait on them to get there. I'm going to New Horizons to pick up my kids. I was sitting there for 10 minutes. That's when Rodolphus was standing in the train yard when he was grabbed by the sheriff's deputy, Monroe stated that he had not committed any crime. Wait, wait. You're gonna go to jail. I'm not doing anything yeah. wrong. Hold on, hold on. Can you hold on. please? I'm not no, no, come on, brother. Hold on, I'm not, Can I'm you not your please? brother. This is assault. At this moment, I saw my children's daycare class and their teachers and everything um, walking past while this was happening. He took the taser and drove it into my leg. And pretty much at that point, he lost all control of the leg. The deputy later claimed that the crime committed by Dolphus was taking a 25 cent tin of fish from the lunch pail of a Southern railway worker. Unable to provide any evidence to support this, the charge was changed to vagrancy. And I kept asking them what I was being charged with. They'll create false charges just to make sure that everything is perpetuated. Judge Longshore found Dolphus guilty of misdemeanor vagrancy and sentenced him to five months and 20 days of hard labor in the mines of Tennessee Coal, Iron, and Railroad. Going back to the vagrancy laws of the late 19th century, the people who make those laws have in mind another group of people for whom there is an inherent threat to their livelihood, like breaking barbecue ordinances in public parks or sleeping in dormitories that white people don't think you live there. I have every right to call the police. It allows law enforcement to regulate whether or not certain behavior for one group of people is deemed uh, criminal and another group of people uh, is just frivolous activity. Many people remember the Starbucks debacle in Philadelphia. There were two African-American men at a Starbucks. The employee had them arrested for loitering where they're clearly not engaging in that behavior. Loitering is a police tool of choice. It's the go-to offense that police often use to impose their authority. In the misdemeanor system, there is no conduct too minor, no act too small that the state cannot render a crime. Black people charged with a misdemeanor are 75% more likely to be locked up than white people. 
You have to realize that these laws didn't happen by chance. They were part of a, uh, a system to continue to oppress black bodies. Our misdemeanor system includes all kinds of offenses, and some of them can be quite serious. Domestic violence, DUI, but most of the time, we treat minor harmless conduct as misdemeanors. Traffic offenses, jaywalking, order maintenance offenses, spitting, driving on a suspended license for failure to pay a fines. And yet, these minor meaningless misdemeanors can have terrible consequences for individuals. To understand the misdemeanor system, follow the money. The accused are paying for the judges, the prosecutors, and the, the public defenders. made more defenders. than three and a half million dollars off phone call. Commissary at the jail, it's a no money maker. They call it the $20 ad. I'm a family member, transferred money in jail. Pocketing leftover feet. money the from the inmates' about food dollars a month in East They are sales. a controversial food vendor with a big fraud, fake contract. Waste and and abuse. Aramark is the company that uses inmate workers. Today's system is estimated at $80 billion. The misdemeanor side of it, it is a way of saddling people with fines and fees that will put money in the pockets of the administrators of that system. The first time I got a ticket, my insurance had lapsed. So I got the speeding ticket and I got a no insurance ticket at the same time. The next time I got pulled over, I was arrested for driving with a suspended license. I paid the tickets, paid the court costs, paid my fees and fines, but they said for driving with a suspended license, the punishment for that is we're gonna suspend your license for two years. I would often have to choose between paying my inspection or my registration or paying my light bill or other bills that I had. I had to drive my car to get to work because I had a construction job. If I needed to take material to the job, I couldn't take plywood or two by fours on a bus. I felt like there was no way I was gonna be able to take care of the kids on my own while you were out, because I didn't know how long you were gonna be in jail. This officer saw me, a young Hispanic guy, driving a 63 Impala and said, you know what, that guy, he's up to something. I was trying to go to work, trying to pay bills, and he's treating me like a hardened criminal. That misdemeanor charge ended up becoming something that I couldn't get rid of. They are being treated as revenue sources charged daily fees for being in jail, supervision fees, tether fees, drug testing fees, database fees to fund bail bondsmen, private probation companies, electronic monitoring companies, drug testing companies. It is disturbingly similar to the way that we saw African-Americans being exploited in the post-war South. I'm the Mario Davis, uh, linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. I was born and raised in Mississippi, pretty much raised by a single mom. Entering into my second year of college, me and a teammate were caught shoplifting groceries from, from Walmart. It kind of felt a lot more like a drug bust than uh, <laughs> um, us having stole some groceries. The bail was set at $10,000, and you know, I didn't have $10,000. The football coaches bailed us out. A misdemeanor, you're supposed to be able to uh, be in front of the judge within 90 days. But this is not happening. This is not happening in our country. We have people who are spending seven, eight months in jail who have not even been sentenced. Cop arrested me and I was charged with the misdemeanor. The term chain gang 
was coined on account of the shackle worn by convict laborers. They said, okay, listen, we're going to let you go home now. But Scram's going to come and uh, put a monitor on you. They were taken to an anvil where a rivet was pounded into the ankle cuffs to keep them closed. Then the cuffs were chained together. The initial fee to get on the scram was $250. That's just to have it put on. Then after that, they charged me $220 a month for the actual monitor. Many of the convicts suffered from shackle sores, ulcers where the iron ground against their skin. Gangrene and other infections were also common. Right after they put it on me, you start causing these really severe sores and rashes, and their attitude pretty much is, it's court ordered, it's by a judge, and you'll wear it, or you can go back to jail. The emaciated convict laborers worked their entire days barefoot, but the shackles were always on their ankles. They mined in them, slept in them, and those who died of disease or beatings were buried in them. What they're doing is unjust. What they're doing is profiteering, because you, you're paying them. You're their slave with their shackle on your foot. this hopeless feeling just overcome me. I couldn't take care of my family. The biggest misconception about misdemeanors is that they are minor. The full consequences of getting a misdemeanor can be astronomical. It hurt me for 10 years, and it completely disrupted my life. And I have been trying to figure out how to get my life back on track. This will be a part of my story for the rest of my life. When people are booked into jails for a week or a year or even a day, you just cannot avoid the trauma that's inflicted upon you. The moment you hit the jail, you don't come out of that unchanged or untouched. You witness trauma, you witness violence, and it changes you. It changes your community. I tried to get a job at Amazon where my roommate worked. I called to Walmart and I called to several other retail stores. I got turned away because I had a misdemeanor charge for theft. Not enough people talk about what it means to have a misdemeanor on your record. It can determine the kind of job that you get, to the kind of housing that you can qualify for, to the kind of schools that you can go to. A lot of people are harmed for life because of the smallest infractions. They're being rendered homeless. They're going without food, without medication. Their children are suffering. Due to misdemeanors, I lost my housing. Shortly after that, I lost my vehicle, which led to me losing my job. And it was just one thing after another, like, like kicks to the face. I had full custody of my children. They had to get to school. We had to sleep in the car, waking up at like four in the morning, getting to a laundromat to make sure that they have clean school uniforms. I had worked so hard and all of that was ruined by one charge. One misdemeanor ruined my ability to get even just basic work. They can't get a job if they have to check a box that says they've been convicted of a crime. They can't even rent housing because they got poor credit when they received a ridiculous $500 speeding violation. So this system was designed both to extract from people, but also to marginalize their presence in society. It's gonna be a mass grave site. This is the dormitory. We stoop the crowd. These are the beds. They right beside each other. And this is the space. Everybody just dying and getting sick and shit. Like this shit is serious as fuck. Bro, you all right? Mm -mm. You want me to go get the police? No. What have you done, this bitch? You ain't gonna do nothing, bro. <laughs> this motherfucker literally in this bitch dying, bro. I don't know what to do. 
worst places to be during this pandemic is locked up in jail. The judge never said, I'm sending you to prison to die. The same horror story is emerging of the unchecked spread of infection and inmates essentially being left to die. Now jaywalking or theft of a small amount or any sort of vagrancy type of um, behavior can lead to your incarceration and eventual contracting of the virus and death. I've been in jail for two and a half months for petty theft, a nonviolent crime that carries a misdemeanor charge for the price value of um, less than $100. There's been three deaths, two being inmates, one being a guard. As far as like people who are working for the facility, they're like intertwined. They could easily be catching it. That's how one of the guards caught it. My life is in danger. These human beings aren't valued enough for us to apply the same kinds of safety measures there that we are in other sectors of society. If it wasn't already bad enough that you are booked into jail because you didn't have the money to pay the ticket and your license is suspended, that is now life-threatening to you. Sheriff's Office is now releasing nonviolent inmates as a next step in mitigating the spread of COVID-19. Hundreds of inmates have been released from Shelby County's jail in an effort to put fewer people at risk for coronavirus. A total of 38 inmates are ordered to release. They were inmates. Their time is up. Now they're freed people. Because of COVID-19, thousands of misdemeanor defendants are rightly being released. It's clear that these individuals should have never been incarcerated in the first place. Um, we can tell by the fact that after these releases, we haven't seen any sort of crime wave. There's a different type of crime wave that should concern us, though, and that's the crime of violence against black people post-Civil War. State violence has historically been used to intimidate people of color, especially black people. We see this all throughout history. Misdemeanors, they have almost nothing to do with public safety. What misdemeanors do is give police an extraordinary amount of discretion with any minor offense premised on the idea that the black man is a threat. Misdemeanors are a very specific mechanism that legalize violence toward black people and keep them in a very particular place, not just as individuals, but as an entire community of people. When we look at so many cases in history, often what started as an investigation or a claim of a petty misdemeanor offense led to police officers supported and sanctioned racial terrorism. All too often we see police exercising that terrible authority of violence against people who have only been suspected of the most minor of crimes. The problem isn't bad apple cops. The problem is the system is working the way it's supposed to. Police shot this boy outside my apartment. <laughs> they kill him.
Gray appeared to be unable to walk and was screaming as he was carried, feet dragging on the ground, to a police van. I know, I know, you just saw your draw. My life could have so easily been taken in that skyway. George Floyd goes to show further that the most minor of offenses, even no offense at all, could result in death. The very purpose of racial terrorism is control, is social control. What we have seen in the killings of those accused was that misdemeanors became the gateway for police violence and murder. We are seeing decriminalization. We are seeing citations instead of arrests. We are seeing people let out of jail. We are seeing pushback against fines and fees. But at the same time, there is so much more work that needs to be done. Who defined what a misdemeanor is? The whole thing was built on exploitation, on racial violence, on building up industrial capitalism. We should not be locking up people who speed who are too poor to pay a fine or a fee, who loiter or trespass or jaywalk. They're not dangerous, they're not scary. There's never been a good reason to lock up anybody for petty offenses. Like slavery back in the day, the law itself is doing the work of oppression. The criminal law is providing the authority to arrest black people, to punish black people, to kill black people. And ultimately, the real crime is that we're black. When officers use their discretion and still choose to arrest low-level offenders instead of citing and releasing them, they are choosing to lock a human into a cage we wouldn't even put our dogs in. We got 123 people out of the Hayes County Jail yesterday. It eliminated the penalty for being caught driving with a suspended license from another two-year suspension to a 90-day suspension. Don't allow the outside world to corrupt you. Don't, don't allow the outside world to tell you who you are. I wanted to be a voice for those who are not able to be a voice for themselves. 